welcome back to Two Chicks in a Horror Flick. I'm Tawny Ray. And I'm Felicia Connor. And tonight we are joined by the lovely, lovely Jess from Horror Movie Crew to wrap up our Friendsgiving episodes. Welcome, Jess. Yay. Yay. Hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. We're so excited to um, pry you away from your podcast, <laughs> get you alone so that you can talk to us without Josh here. Yes. Very important. <laughs> you I can say whatever you want. Yes. <laughs> we oh won't <boy>. tell. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble on here. Uh oh. And um, we're going to be talking about the movie, The Amityville Horror, the remake from 2005. And maybe let's just start off with what's everybody drinking? So, Jess, what are you drinking? I am drinking some basic ass, like red wine. It's like a sweet red. So I yeah. love a sweet red wine. It's probably my favorite type of wine. Me too. And I was just telling like Josh and Seth, I was like, I wish I was more of like a whiskey drinker, but I was like, I don't think I'm doing it right. Like, I don't think I'm picking the right whiskey. Mm. Mm. Is there a wrong way? I don't know. A wrong <laughs> whiskey, probably if you're drinking it neat or something. Neat? Okay. Yeah, All right. maybe. So I had to teach Josh how to make it neat. It's literally like, here's the cup and you pour it in. So Jess, you you like can't get it wrong. It's the cup, and you pour, pour it, it in, in and you've made it. But I'm like, you probably don't want to do that with fireball or something like that. Oh, I cannot do fireball like at all. I can't do cinnamon <laughs> stuff. Like not my thing. Mm. <laughs> That's fun. Yeah. I think I've just had too much cheap whiskey. I yeah. need like some more top shelf stuff. <laughs> I think that is the difference because I used to not like whiskey, but it's because all the whiskey that I would drink was like bullshit. What is that? E and J? That might be I don't brandy actually, but like black velvet is what we used to drink. Oh. I don't this is forever ago, but when we did one of our episodes with you guys, um I was trying to remember of this cheap, cheap whiskey that we used to drink in college all the time, and that's what it was. It's black velvet. It's like black velvet. bottom shelf, cheapest. Uh I have drank so much black velvet in my life and it's not good, but it's just cheap. But now I'm like, I appreciate the good. Yeah. Like Buffalo trace. <laughs> the good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. In high school, I used to drink Southern comfort out of the bottle. Ooh. Is it that whiskey? Southern comfort is a maple. So, uh, Ooh, yeah, it is. It's whiskey. And in it, though, it says it didn't taste this way. It's it's made with like fruits and it had vanilla. And I'm like, oh, no, caramel, caramel. And I'm like, oh, it's like caramel. And I would tell myself that until I was drunk enough that I, it actually tasted like caramel. <laughs> right. But <laughs> I can like taste that still. I drank so much Southern Comfort when I was younger. Uh, like, uh, oh, I, I can't. I overdid it. Yes. Yeah, me too. Me too. Peppermint schnapps is that for me. Ooh. Oh, gross. Yep. So Very gross. To this day, if I need to throw up, I, all I need to do is think about peppermint schnapps and it makes me so nauseous. <laughs> oh, so listen to this. I have a, a mini story, if that's OK. I haven't shared it before. So, I mean, uh, other people in my life know, but on the podcast. So when I was a teenager, I um, snuck my dad's Uzo and I was drinking it with a friend and we were doing this thing that I was like a tiny thing back then. And my friend was uh, a larger girl. And so we were, she wasn't getting drunk and I was kind of, I was getting really wasted and we were doing like stupidest thing. Like we would take some and then sit. I don't feel anything. Do you feel anything? I don't feel anything. Do you feel anything? Well, thank God she didn't get wasted because I almost died. She had to go leave me in the park, get my parents, they took him to the hospital. They were, the doctor was like, I think my blood alcohol was like 0.5. They didn't know if I was going to make it. Oh um, my and God. And when, when I came out of it, I had like even, I had thrown up in my hair. They had to cut my hair. I had thrown up pieces of my stomach so I couldn't eat like solid foods. It was insane. That is crazy. So I don't she like left- Uzo. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's scary. Ins- yeah. yeah, it's scary, but I'm okay. So I don't dwell on it, but yes, you <laughs> made it. <laughs> she she left you in the park. Like to, what happened? Well, because she couldn't carry me because I was out. Like, oh. so she had to get somebody. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> so here's Felicia just laying there in the, <laughs> in the park. 
totally passed out. Like, so after moment. that, I just drank like Mickey's forties and and stuff, and I didn't, you know, I didn't sneak any liquor till I grew up. Later, till later, <laughs> till I grew up, and I didn't need to sneak it. When oh. my first drinking experience, we also got into my friend's dad's liquor cabinet and it was fucking ever clear and so we oh. like a couple of dumbasses we don't know what we're doing we like pour <laughs> it just into pepsi right we just pour <laughs> it into some pepsi don't know to stir it or anything and like i remember taking the first sip and it's just pure ever clear because it's just like floating on top of the pepsi i'm like <clears throat> oh. <laughs> like mm. oh my god that is bad it was it was wild. We didn't get like super trashed or anything. Thank God. Cause that could have, I think it tasted so bad actually that it was hard to drink and actually get drunk on, which is probably a good thing. <laughs> oh yeah. Everclear is rough. Yeah. That's like legit. <laughs> it's like what, like top level, like hundred and something proof. Oh Ugh. my God. Gross. I don't even think you can buy it in Ohio. You have to go like to Indiana to buy it. It's not oh, even legal really? here. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Probably for good reason. Yeah, it's like you could put it in your car and run your car off of it. Like, that's how fucking <laughs> straight up it is. Uh, Felicia, what are you drinking? Well, I'm wearing my HMC shirt, and there's Jess <sighs> I right worn in the mine. middle of my I'm chest. I too. <laughs> oh, same one. Twins. <laughs> <laughs> and I am drinking a Dirty Martini. It's with Tito's, some Dirty Martini mix, and then I have four olives, two garlic, one like red pepper and one blue cheese. Mm. That's fancy. <laughs> She's always fancy, dude. <laughs> I love Tito's. It's my yeah, favorite. Tito's vodka. is good. Yeah, I like me it. too. It's so smooth. Yeah. What you got, Tawny? I'm drinking some white wine, actually. Chardonnay, mm. which is not usually my jam. Mm. If I, I just like sweeter wines. Like I like the sweeter reds. And um, sweeter white wines, like, you know, straight up Moscato, Riesling. Give me the sweetest wines that there are. But this Same. one actually is really good. It's like really cheap, I guess. It's called Big Churn. Oh, I've seen Ooh. that. I've seen that. And um, Jade had like a little, you know, Thanksgiving office party today and they got that. And so we got to bring the rest of it home. <laughs> and I was nice. like, I'm drinking that. Nice. I prefer good. dry wines because I'm old AF and that those <laughs> sweet wines give me heartburn now. Mm. Heartburn? Yeah, like I can't do like Pinot Grigios and and thing or and even like I love rosés but they can't be too sweet. Yeah, the yeah. acid like, you know, I don't know if it's heartburn, it's like burning here. There's my heart. <laughs> I think There's that's what heart. it is. <laughs> there it is. Just burny. <laughs> burny. <laughs> Um, okay, Jess, so why don't you plug your podcast? Tell the listeners what you guys do, what you're all about, and where to find you. Sure. Um, my name is Jessica Worth, and I am one third of the Horror Movie Crew podcast with Josh and Seth. We are a horror slash, uh, as Josh would say, a comedy podcast. And we um, basically pick a movie and dissect it and laugh and laugh and make fun of each other. And <laughs> we uh, drop a podcast every Wednesday. And also, we're on Patreon now, and we have lots of bonus content and perks. If you want to check us out, we're on Instagram and Facebook. Facebook at Horror Movie Crew Podcast and all major podcast platforms. Nice. <laughs> we love your podcast. I love your podcast so much. I always am saying like I'm fangirling about it. I love it. If if I was in person, I would definitely get your guys's autographs. <laughs> That's how much I love it. <laughs> well, we're definitely going to meet in person at some point, but yes, we also yeah. love you guys' podcast just the same. <laughs> I'm so Thank glad. You. I'm honored. Sister hey, podcast. Hi, Yes. Know, that's what we that's what we call you guys all the time. <laughs> um so why let's start off with why did you pick this movie to bring on to the podcast to talk about? I picked this is like one of those first movies that really scared the shit out of me. Um I, I'm a sucker for a haunted house flick or just storyline in general, and especially when it's based off of true events. So like, and these events are like, especially terrifying, like just, and then the supernatural element that's thrown into it as well. It's, I just thought it was a really good movie to discuss. So. Okay. 
Have you yes. seen the original or had you seen the original? Yes, or, I did actually before. watch it. I had not seen it before this one. Okay. I, I saw this one first and probably just a few years back, I saw the original with um, Josh Brolin. I think is, yeah. he's in the original. So Jess, what is something that you want everybody to know about you? Everybody to know about me. Um, I have a five-year-old daughter and she's pretty much uh, my life. Everything revolves around her. Her name's Willow. Um, other than the podcast, that's pretty much what I'm doing. Um, most of the time other than work is hanging out with her and yeah. <laughs> I love all your picks. I love, love, love your picks. And if Thank you want to share th- stuff that's coming up on the podcast, anything yeah. coming up you want to share? Yeah. So, um, so right now we're finishing up Thanksgiving and it's a who's coming to dinner theme. Um, and I think the latest one that just dropped was my pick for the month, which was, we are what we are. Mm. And, um, yeah, that dropped this past Wednesday. And then, um, next month we have a very bacon Christmas. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So we're all picking a different Kevin Bacon horror movie to discuss. So that's what we have coming up. (laughs) Oh, how fun. Do we get like, do you know which one you're going to pick? You're going to keep a secret? Are you, do you have to keep a secret? Uh, Oh, you know what? I don't care. I'll tell you guys. I'm picking Flatliners. Oh, all right. Nice. Oh, shit. (laughs) I haven't seen that for so long, but I remember that's one of those movies that obviously in my reaction was very very visceral reaction there i loved that movie but I ha- yeah i haven't seen it since though so yes i haven't seen it in a while either and i'm like i feel like that would be a really good one to go totally. over so i'm excited that's, that's an awesome fun. one I, I just watched oh sorry no go ahead oh i was gonna say i watched um because you guys were recording it i'm gonna listen to your episode this weekend the um we are who we are that's yes. what it's called right yeah we are what we are we I are think. what we are yes. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's all I'm going to say. I that's crazy. all I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah, so crazy. Um, I was just going to say, if I was there, my pick would be Hollow Man. Hopefully I'm not mixing up movies. He is in that, right? Yes. Yeah, that would be my pick. I believe that's actually what Josh picked. Okay. So, and then I think Seth is, uh, he picked Stir of Echoes. Ooh, oh, yeah. yeah. We did that one. So, that was our one first of our year. first. Yeah. Yeah. I would have to look at a whole list of Kevin Bacon horror movies first before I dedicate myself to a choice. Yeah. But yeah. Flatliners, that's epic. Great one. <laughs> Great pick. I'm excited. Um, do you have like a favorite episode that you guys have done? Oh, let's see. Um, I really liked our um, episodes that we did while we stayed at the cabin, um, which was like the wrong turn series Series, yeah um we just had a lot of fun recording those (laughs) it wasn't necessarily the movie that was my favorite it was just that recording was was really fun so if you want to hear a fun episode listen to that one (laughs) (laughs) okay it sounded super fun like really great concept we had a blast and we were also drinking lots of beverages so (laughs) (laughs) of course (laughs) Okay, so are we ready to jump into the movie discussion? Yes. Okay. Let me pull up my notes. Okay, so we're talking about the Amityville Horror from 2005. The director is Andrew Douglas, who I looked up and didn't recognize anything else that he's done. He's mostly done, like, music videos, and this was actually his directorial debut. Mm -hmm. And since then, it just... He, he hasn't done a lot either. It's just mostly been like music videos. He's done like two episodes of a TV show. I think mine or yeah, Mindhunter, which surprised me because oh, that's like I love that. big time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, just thought that was interesting to note. And for cast, we've got Ryan Reynolds obviously plays George Lutz. Melissa George plays Kathy Lutz. Jesse James plays Billy Lutz. Jimmy Bennett plays Michael Lutz. Chloe Grace Moretz plays Chelsea Lutz, which was really a surprise. I was like trying. I was like, I know, I know this person. Who and is she's she? So young, so young in it. I yeah. Googled it immediately. I was like, this is bugging me. Who is this person? <laughs> I just saw them. She's like a little baby. She's so, so the tiny. The cutie dude is a baby. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Rachel Nichols plays Lisa and Philip Baker Hall plays Father Calloway. Mm. 
So IMDb gave this a 6 out of 10. Rotten Tomatoes gives it gives it a 23%, and 83% of Google users liked this movie. So there's a big, big gap there, I feel like, yeah. between 80% and 20%. And the budget was $19 million. Box office was $108 million, so it seems to have done well. And that's what I got. Maybe before we go into two minutes of Tawny, anybody got anything? That you just said after what you said? No. <laughs> i have some like real crime the some of the stuff from the real crime but we'll probably all talk I have, about I have that a later. random thing that i oh. actually found um i was just looking up like some of the history of it um and it did it did say that the conjuring films are connected to the um 1979 film the amityville horror as that case was also famously um investigated by ed and lorraine warren mm. Yeah, I didn't know that until I watched that Conjuring movie. And then I was okay. like, no way. I went and looked it up. And yeah, they fucking went there in real life. Yeah, yeah I thought it was just like they just threw that in there and it wasn't real. But yeah, I was like, holy shit, that's real. <laughs> that's crazy. They really went there. I think they sent like several paranormal investigators and we can talk more about that later. But yeah, yeah, like and everybody kind of seems to have a different take on it, at least that I read. But Ed and Lorraine Warren seem to be on board that there was a malevolent spirit there. That's crazy. There was a, I Googled the house and the whole street, you can see the whole street, but not the house is all blurred. Yeah. That's so if creepy. you could do that, Google, you know, put in Google the address earth or whatever, Google earth. Yes. And <clears throat> Google maps. I, I just did this earlier because I wanted to see what the house looks like now. It's all blurred. So then I did like the spin around to see if it was just and nothing else is blurred but that house. Oh, so I don't God. know. Is that something you can request? Like maybe the owners don't want it on there or is that some shady shit there from the ghosts? <laughs> I don't know, because I also saw like an article that people were like wanting to see if you could actually like tour the house. And they were like, no, but we don't mind people like, you know, stopping and looking at it. Just don't disturb the neighbors. Yeah. Oh, so it seems like but, they wouldn't go through that extent to try to get it blurred from Google Maps. Why would you even? That doesn't, you know. I, right. I wouldn't actually be surprised if they did, because I, I did read something about them going through and changing the face of the house. They mm -hmm. changed it so that it wasn't as recognizable because pe so many people were stopping and making a big deal out of it. So I bet you can request to have it blurred. Oh, maybe. OK. And maybe just to protect kind of people's peace <laughs> living in that house. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's wild. So I guess we'll jump into two minutes with Tawny. This is going to be 20 seconds with Tawny because it's a tale as old as time. Everybody knows the story. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. After Ronnie DeFeo kills his entire family, the Lutz family buys their old house for a slim and deal. But George Lutz begins to slip a little. He starts yelling at the kids, chopping too much wood, and cannot seem to get warm anywhere but the basement. Eventually, things escalate to the point where George kills the family dog with an axe, believing him to, at first to be a demon. Needing a night out and away from the house, George and Kathy hire the worst babysitter ever to watch the kids. She tells them of the tragic murders in the house and gets locked in a closet by the ghost of Jody DeFeo. Kathy asks a priest for help, but he runs away from the house, leaving her with one option left, the library. <laughs> <laughs> She finds out that the house was the site of some old-timey torture and experimentation by an evil culty reverend named Jeremiah Ketchum. George becomes fully possessed and tries to kill the family, but they succeed in knocking him out and getting him away from the house. The movie states that the Lutz family fled the house after just 28 days without even gathering their belongings. Cue last weird scary scene of Jody the ghost in the house screaming and being pulled into the floor. The end. Nice. Also, lots of Ryan Reynolds shirtless chopping wood. Oh, and, absolutely. And running around. Getting in the bath, getting out of the yeah. bath, you know. <laughs> running around in the rain. Making lots a little love. Felicia's like, it was the bath scenes for me. <laughs> the bath. It's getting in the bath. <laughs> oh, rewind, rewind, rewind. Oh, just, I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything, you know. Right. right. Blings a couple times, you know. Yeah. I think I missed a few in between there. <laughs> Overall, Jess, we know that you like it, obviously. Um, but do you want to speak to a little bit more about just how you feel about it overall? Was there a difference watching it now? How many times have you seen it? 
Yes. I've, gosh, I've seen it so many times, but it used to be a lot more scary to me. Obviously I've seen um, some more obscure things up to this point, (laughs) but um, like when I first watched it, I was like, this is one of the scariest things I've seen. Like just the the storyline, the events that took place, like the supernatural stuff always gets me Mm -hmm. anyways. So like, I, and I love that. I love, I love being fucking scared and the ghosts and the, the demonic stuff. Like that's, that's my favorite shit. (laughs) Yes. But, um, I do think, um, like some of the acting too is not as like great as I remembered, (laughs) but, um, I still like it and I would watch it probably anytime. Yeah. Okay. Felicia, how'd you feel overall? Uh, I think I felt the same. I liked it. I, um, I, I screamed out loud at a couple <laughs> points. Like it, it was good. I, I was really excited about the story and, um, th- this is what I'm stuttering about. I hated the mother. I hated her. She was infuriating. And so getting past that feeling was hard for me, but the other pieces, I liked it. It was just, um, cool. Gosh, that, yeah, I didn't like her, but okay. But let me say something positive. I really liked crazy Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, That was great. Not (laughs) with his clothes on too. Just like literally his acting, (laughs) literally his acting. Um, I also thought the little kids did good. Uh, it was just her. Like every time she did something, I was getting so mad about her choices that, it might affect my score, but overall I liked it. I liked the movie. I'd watched again. I enjoyed it. Not to cut in, but um, like you said about Ryan and his like descent into madness. That's another thing I really like about this movie because you don't see that with him very often. He's always, it's like the comedic performance action maybe, but like this was like a darker role for him. And I, I feel like he did really good with it. Yeah. I agree. How about you, Tony? Um, I, I don't know how to feel. I think I, I didn't hate it, but I think I disliked it. Okay. And and I don't, we'll talk more about why I think, but overall it just felt really like bland, I guess. I, I think I remember watching it the first time, like right, probably when it came out and thinking like, oh, that was good. And it was scary. And I liked it. And maybe part of it is that it just has hasn't aged well in the way that it feels like all those other movies that were made around the same time. Like I was getting some major like Saw vibes. It's almost like they watched Saw and they were like, we need to incorporate this editing style into this movie. And it's just like, I don't know. It just feels like it it blends in with all of those kind of and doesn't offer anything like new or different. And so I think that's why I, upon rewatching it, I'm like, I, I was kind of bored. And it's not like the pacing is bad because it's a fast movie. It's an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. Like they get right into it and movie through. But I was I found myself just being like, all right, come on. <laughs> Until Ryan Reynolds took his shirt off. I was like, OK, I'll watch this. That's my <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I feel like I have some problems with it. And I feel like Ryan Reynolds did a really good job, but but there's something in here about like the direction or the editing that made it feel like almost comical in parts when they weren't, it wasn't supposed to be, I don't think. And I did not like that. I was like, what is happening? But I actually wonder <laughs> if it's this guy's, like, he, because he wasn't super well-versed in directing movies. Yeah. I, I think maybe that's why it came through like that in some moments, but... Yeah, that's kind of where I landed. I didn't hate it. I didn't I, love it. I can agree with that too. I did feel kind of like bored in a couple of spots. And I was like, man, I don't remember like feeling like this the last <laughs> time that I saw it. Like it's been a while, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like the mom did good though. Oh God. I, I'm surprised that you <laughs> disliked her so much. I hated Alicia. her. I hated her. She was so frustrating. Are you fucking kidding? She was so frustrating. First of all, she does not barely stick up for her kids. Some of the stuff that he says, like when he's yelling and she's like, ah, oh, my, oh, honeys, go upstairs. Oh, I can't believe, it. you know, it's just like, oh, it was so it was so infuriating. I have lots of notes on it. I couldn't stand her. Well, first when it started, I wrote here, 
God, her utter joy and optimism on everything is bugging me a little bit. But I put a little bit. She's and because you know it's, it's good to feel joy in your life. That's that's a good thing. But there is oh here here's a great example. Um, her little girl just almost committed suicide because her imaginary friend told her you'll be able to see daddy, and she's like, oh honey, you miss your daddy. I know you. No bitch. She <laughs> almost committed suicide to go see her dad because this imaginary friend told her this is not fucking get into. Oh, you miss your daddy. Because even if that was the thing. Oh, I miss my daddy. I'm going to kill myself so I could be with him. This is a larger thing. She always kind of went oh, so soft and it frustrated me even in towards the end. Sorry, I, I'm going to get get this out. And then we'll be good. Um, when he had the um, uh, Ryan Reynolds had the older boy boy up against the house like he was gonna kill him and she's like let him go and then <laughs> yeah and then she did hit him in the face and i was like okay good no she no she didn't she put the gun and he just grabbed it and put it to her head and she's like oh i can't and then she runs off with the other kids the other boy sitting right there <sighs> okay maybe i got that out and so then like i'll be able to be happy about the rest <laughs> The part that you were talking about after she like tried to commit suicide and she was like, oh, you want to go see your daddy? And Ryan was like, um, I'm just calling him Ryan throughout like the whole movie. Ryan. <laughs> Ryan is like back there like, what the fuck is wrong with you people? And I'm like, his point is valid right there. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you people? <laughs> yes. yes. That was one of those comedic moments that I was like, what? Like, I just feel like there's several moments when he says stuff where you're like, <laughs> It's like too self-aware. And I don't think that's what they're going for as a movie. It's just like, I don't know. And I get that he's supposed to be possessed and he's like, you know, whatever. But it just was funny. It's a funny thing to say. He's like, what the fuck is wrong with you people? He's like, this is a this crazy family or something like that. It was just like so weird. (laughs) He's like, I'm packing up, going to the basement. I think he had already done that earlier, but... (laughs) I do love this story. Like, I think the story itself is so chilling. It has always scared me from my first exposure to it, which was just my dad, like, kind of explaining the plot. I think he was watching it on TV. And I think he was like, you can't watch this movie. It's fucking scary. But I was, like, intrigued. And so he, like, told me about it. And I think I saw some scenes from the movie. But I I can't, I can't remember if I watched the entire original all the way through. But that was the one that he was watching. And so I like that about it. Like, I like the idea of there, like you said, Jess, there's this like haunted house, right? And I like the idea of the house sort of almost being like a a living thing that like preys on people. And I feel like you get that in this story. And so that was cool. I feel like we kind of lost it a little bit towards the end, but I liked like the flies in the vent and the like... I don't know the way it was like making noises and stuff made it feel very much like it was alive. I feel like another part about that made this movie kind of boring as it was like, it took so long to get to the point of him being like in madness, like fully consumed. And then it was like rushed kind of yeah. like to the end. Like they quickly went through, you know, the basement and what happened with um, Reverend, was it like Reverend kitchen? Ketchum. 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 Yeah. and all of that so I feel like it, it it just like picked up speed at the end and then it was like over <laughs> yeah I felt like I agree with you both I love this story and this idea and the fact that it was you know based on true events th- around things that had really happened um and uh, I remember seeing the I was little and I saw the original one and I remember I remember being so impressed that it was so terrifying, even though you didn't see anything really. Mm. I'd have to rewatch it. This was a long time ago, but I was thinking that as well, as far as him descending into madness and it was an, and it taking a while. And I think it was really hard. Maybe you just need a very, very skilled director to be able to do this because there has to be a point too, where enough humanity in him where this mom isn't going to be like i'm fucking out of here before realizing that oh he's insane he like there was points where he was like just what i don't know what he said he screamed at the boys just shut your fucking mouth or something like that and and go to your bedroom and she just looks at him 
go to your bedroom, boys. That's like, that's a point where I would have been like, you watch your fucking mouth. But <laughs> but she doesn't ever leave. So it's like this, he can't get too wild and wild and out, right? Because then right. how is she going to stay there that long? You're just going to, you know, I mean, I don't know. But I agree with you guys. I was just thinking about how, how would they do it so that it's believable that she stayed that long. Yeah. It's I don't, a hard balance. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't like the, I didn't like how she was like, no one's dying tonight. And she whacked him <laughs> in the head. Like, how did she know that wasn't going to kill him? She's just skilled at whacking oh people God, in the head with so r- rifles. Right. I just know how to whack somebody naturally that they're going to pass out and I could drag them a really far away. Um, I almost wish that he, I don't know, somehow, I don't know, somehow got away from the house or something a moment of clarity came to him or something that he was able to escape with them. Cause I guess the, the real family did all escape because that I was like, I did like how the little boy said though, like, why are we helping him? You know, why yeah. are we doing this? And she's like, I'll tell you later. Um, yeah. <laughs> that was one of my least favorite parts. I mean, to know about that. She's like, I can't explain it right now. I'm like, but you can definitely explain it right now. You just be like, it's yeah. the house. The house is possessing him. That's it. That's all you needed to yes. say. No, I didn't like that she said that. I liked that the boy called her out. Like, yeah. why are yeah. we helping him? <laughs> I don't I just have to be the voice of reason here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that really was shocking. I was like, uh, if he's not dead, you just gave him brain damage for sure. Like that yeah. hard of a hit into the head. <laughs> no, she's oh, very yeah. skilled at that. She's skilled. Yeah. Very no, good she at did it like a couple times, didn't she? Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, no, he's perma fucked up like that. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's just really not not possessed anymore. He's just fucked up. <laughs> yeah, it had nothing to do with driving out in the middle of the water away from the house. No, <laughs> this is the brain damage. This is this is what's going on. <laughs> I did like how, though, when he left, there was like a moment of clarity because I like like a slow descent into madness and I feel like they did a good job here. It does take a little bit long, I think, to get to the action or to any of the parts. I don't know, because I feel like there's stuff that happens, but it's just sort of like. I don't know, I feel like now maybe our our attention span is a little too short. Now we need it to be shorter. So even though this was only made in 2005, it still feels like too long, like we needed shit to start happening quicker. Mm -hmm. But um, I liked when he would leave. And there would be like, you know, he'd come back to his senses and be like a normal person. I really liked that. And I liked how they actually had him wear these contacts. I have a note about it. Um, He wore special contact lenses in many of the scenes to make his eyes eyes seem black with just a white ring around them. And then I think they did something to make him look a little bit more bloodshot because sometimes his eyes would be like super red. But as soon as he got away from the house, he was fine. Yeah. I liked that look because I thought it was subtle enough that it wasn't like way over the top CGI weird stuff. I don't know. I like that, too. I want to say that I have his eyes with exclamation points. So when they were going on the date, like she they were fucked up. His eyes. You could see yeah. it. Oh, like, yeah. and, and she's just like, yeah, let's go on a date. And I would have been like, babe, what? are you OK? <laughs> should, should we be going out? Because your eyes man what is going on with you you? don't look good (laughs) like we should go to the doctor (laughs) (laughs) let's go on a date to the doctor's office Mm because you obviously need help (laughs) well and the part like they leave the house several times and it's like when are you going to kind of catch on that you're leaving the house and you're feeling better every time like and you're just going to keep going back Yeah, Yeah, because it's such a drastic change. I'm feeling better. I'm feeling better. Strangely enough, I'm feeling better. Now I'm a fucking madman. I mean, come on. Oh, yeah. It's like as soon as I get back, he sets foot on the property and it's like, yeah, snap right back into it. I do get you put all your money into this. So it's not like, oh, we can just quickly turn this around and sell it. And where are we going to stay? So I, I do get trying to work it out. But I mean, it just gets so bad. With him, yeah. with him, you know, that I really hated how she left all she this is a very bad situation at this point. She left all the kids at the house with him while she went to the library and went to. The, I was thinking that, too. I was like, oh, they're all there. Exposed she was to him. a lot. I feel like. Yeah. 
Like she was always leaving and then coming back and be like, somebody should have been watching you. And I'm like, well, you shouldn't pay more attention to his fucking crazy attitude. <laughs> he was like abusive to these kids in portions of it towards the end, you know? And she's just like, well, can you watch the kids? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. You, crazy, aggressive, you know, asshole. Can you watch the kids while I go to the library real quick? And I think I would have brought them all with, with me if I felt like, you know, researching at the library, you know? Yeah. <laughs> they could help put them to work yeah <laughs> i didn't like the youngest boy i felt like he was a terrible actor i feel like the other two kids did a good job chloe grace moretz and the um oldest boy i feel like they did they put in some work they did a really good job but then it sucks because you s- put this other kid next to them who is just doing a terrible job in some moments i was like yikes I wish this had been a little bit more balanced. I made a note of that too. I said, I was like, this little kid is just not that great. But I was like, they've already spent all their money on Ryan Reynolds. And <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I yeah. don't know if Chloe Grace Moretz was in anything else at that time. But yeah, I, was I think like, this might have been her debut also. Okay. I think this might have been the first one that she was in. Um, just another random note on the cast. Megan Fox actually auditioned for the role of the babysitter, which I thought was interesting. I feel like she would have she would have been able to do that role well. Yeah, because I don't think she's good either. The babysitter. Like, no, no. <laughs> You're right. All their money went elsewhere. They were yes. like, we got to pay Ryan Reynolds 80 percent of our <laughs> budget. Where else? Who, who else can we get in here? Oh, yeah. They're just fillers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Because she, it was, that's a very, I don't know how popular sh- she was back then, um, Megan Fox, but there was such a small po- part, you know what I mean? The baby. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I don't remember where, uh, like when this would have been in the timeline of like Transformers and when she really blew up and then there was like, and then she had, you know, she blew up and then it was like, she fell off a cliff, like people seem to like blacklist her. So I don't know where it falls in that timeline, but man, this, this whole portion of the movie was like really annoying to me. This is where I feel like a lot of that stuff happens. It's like kind of supposed to be funny almost, but it's like, I'm like, okay, she's like in there smoking weed. (laughs) Like, and she's like, waves it around and like opens the door. I'm like, yeah, (laughs) nice try. But she's like the most piss poor, bad babysitter. And I feel like they almost tried to make a joke of it because they mention it several times. She's like, man, I'm a shitty babysitter. And then the other, I think one of the boys is like, you're a bad babysitter. And then the the little girl comes in and says, yeah, Jody says you're a really bad babysitter. It's like, okay, we fucking get it. We get it. (laughs) it. It almost was like, did they get into the shooting process and realize that she was so bad that they had to make a joke out of it? Or was it like intended to be that way from the beginning? I don't know. It just was weird. Yeah. I don't know if her character is just supposed to be like dumb kind of on purpose or or what, but yeah, yeah. just even like her whole outfit, <laughs> yeah, like really like becoming was... a babysit and that. <laughs> no, this was the seventies though. Yeah. I did take that into account too. I'm like, well, I guess, you know, the, the wardrobe was a little bit different. So Maybe. <laughs> I'm like, you're not cold. This is supposed to be a cold house. I mean, I don't know. She took a huge, like, it looked like furry jacket off. And then she just got that on under it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like what was the, the point of that? Like she, at first I thought maybe she went there because she heard stories about it and she was, mm-hmm. you know, trying to get into the house um, that would have worked, I think, with the way she was dressed and the way she was acting. But no, no, she just went there to terrorize those kids. I was even like, yeah, it's a little bit more fucked up that she was there before and like knew the family. <laughs> and she's like, I'm just going to I'm going to go back and see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, scare all the kids that are, live there. Right. I would have totally moved out of that house after my daughter tried to commit suicide. Done. Hundred percent. I'm out. Jody didn't exist until this house, and hopefully she doesn't exist after. And I'm out. And she literally was like, "Yeah." She said that I could go and meet Daddy. I would also be like, "Pack your shit. We're leaving." Yeah. Oh yeah. 
I would, that would have scared the life out of me to roll up and see my daughter on top of the house like that, especially that house. That's like three stories, like huge. Yeah. I would die. <laughs> yeah. I, I can say that mom, I thought her reaction right after that, when they were in the hallway and she was yelling at him, yelling at her, like, why did you do that? You can't like, I did think that that was good. And I was like, okay, here, she's bringing it. And then yeah. she's like, Oh, you miss your daddy, honey. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> it's deeper than that. Stop. Right. I wanted to say I love, I, I know you already mentioned Ryan Reynolds' Descent into Madness, but that scene where he's having his uh, steps on hold the wood and he grabs his face. He's like, we're friends, right? We're friends, right? Like he was so committed. Uh, oh, yeah. I just, I loved it. I loved that. Yeah, that was such a tense part. Yes. Where's the mom? Yeah, where's she's at the library? (laughs) Fucking library. (laughs) Doing some research. (laughs) I I read that he didn't, I also didn't take this note, but I read that he didn't interact with any of the kid actors like at all because he didn't want to develop like a warmth with them so that it would be easier (laughs) to be a dick to them when it came time for those scenes. Mm. And I, I think that makes sense. But he also, I feel like, has a warmth to him in the beginning of the movie that I think does kind of set you at ease and makes you think, like, it's not this guy. This guy's a good guy. It's just whatever is happening with this house is making him totally fucking insane. But yeah, by the time that you get to that wood shopping scene, I was scared. Like, I feel like this is, like, the scariest moment with that little boy holding it. And he's yeah. like, hold it. Hold the wood. He, like, will not let him off the hook. And I would be terrified if, I mean, because you're in this like fucked up situation. There's this like power dynamic of this being like your kind of stepdad like figure, you know, and you have to listen to him. But he's like crying. Oh, that was good. I feel like that's got to be one of the best scenes, I think, in the entire movie for me. Yeah, that was an excellent scene. I agree. That kid's like fucked up and would have permanent damage <laughs> after that. Like he's already lost his dad and misses him and has talked about that like throughout the movie and then his stepdad like he was already kind of having trouble coming to grips with him and I had like mentioned stuff to his mom before and now he's having him chop wood (laughs) like holding the wood while he's chopping it like poor kid he's almost gonna chop his damn arms off I was like there's no way I'd be like I'm not gonna let you chop my arms off okay you can kill me now if that's what you want to do I don't care you just might think run. like as a little guy in the escape, you probably wouldn't have full trust. Oh, the mom's like, there was this man, he killed Indians and then this and that. And so the house was possessed. You might be like, oh, OK, I just yeah. think <laughs> this guy's an asshole and I probably never develop a really close relationship with him. You'd be Take scared years. of him like forever. Years of therapy. Years, yeah. Oh, for sure. Because they didn't see anything. They only saw this manifesting through him, right? I, I feel like the little girl, right, experienced stuff and... Um, well, the little girl saw the little ghost. But, yeah. like, to, like, that the house was terrifying itself was all manifesting through him. She did Wasn't draw it? that, like, picture of him and was like, Jody says he's bad or whatever. So, like... I think she did know that there was some kind of bad thing, but I think that was the extent of it. Like they weren't experiencing it other than that. Like even the little kid, like when he, it was like when they first moved in, he goes to like brush or he goes to the bathroom in the middle of the night and that fucking whatever that thing was standing next to him and it's like dripping blood from its mouth, but he doesn't see it. He just runs back real quick. Like I screamed mm -hmm. at that part. I was sitting there and I was watching it and I was like, (laughs) (laughs) It's so sudden, like, like, oh, my yeah. God. This is the, like, golem-looking thing? Yeah. Yes. And it's just, like, spewing, like, black blood out of its mouth. Okay. I think that was yeah. supposed to be one of the um, men People, that were tortured yeah. below. Yeah. 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 I was so mad when I saw this, though. I was, like, I was, like, because I was already kind of getting the, the sense that they're just showing scary shit that they know is kind of scary you know what i mean like they're just taking again it just feels like let's just copy what's working right now and that's like demon faces blood dripping creepy dolls 
and yeah. mm. this like weird looking person. So I was like really annoyed at the first time. At least it tied in, you know, like in the end, I felt like, OK, at least this person isn't just a random creepy looking person. At least right. it ties into the story. I liked that. But the first time I was like, I think I wasn't scared because I was so annoyed about it. I was like, <laughs> great. Now we're just showing random fucking ghosts. Like, right. <laughs> I do. I don't have any jotted down, but I agree with you, Tani. There were some times where I felt like, oh, now they're just trying to put as many. They're trying to make me jump scare as many times as possible. Like the very ending with the little girl. I don't know how you guys felt about it, but I was like, what is this? Why? Why? Not for me. It wasn't for me either. What did you think, Jess? You liked it? It's okay uh, if you it, did. <laughs> no, it was okay, but I, I think it was kind of cheesy. Like like you said. Oh, like her head did that fast thing. Oh, yeah, too yeah. much. We get it. We get it. The house is sitting there untouched. The evil will always be there. We don't. You don't need to show us. Like That's what's scary, I feel like, about the story is these people fucking left high and dry, left their shit, never to return. The end. Like, that is fucking scary when you just leave it in the air like yeah. that. And you now yeah. you're left to wonder, holy shit, is that house still there? Is there really something there? Yeah. That's fucking scary. I, I don't need you to show me her creepy face. Like, and then, yeah. yeah, the shaking. or Like, you know, we got Jacob's Ladder shit, and then she gets pulled into the floor. I'm like, oh, okay. Jacob's Ladder shit. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> it's like I feel like they normally do that with movies that they maybe want to make a sequel to it but it's like were they really going to try and make a sequel to this like I don't know what they were trying to go for with that yeah it, it made me angry as well <laughs> sorry it, I am feeling a lot calmer though about it when <laughs> she figured out all this stuff and called him and was like Ryan <laughs> no that's not his name but Ryan <laughs> Ryan, you need to get the kids and get out of the house. I wrote, she just gives him a call expecting different results with a bunch of questions. He's fucking mean in the house. He's like, shut up. You're stupid. You're so fucking stupid. He's beating the shit out of everybody. Well, verbally and emotionally. And then she's like, hey, um, I'm hoping you're doing better at this point. And can you get the kids and get out of the house? Because it's, you got to get out of the house. And he just rips the phone out of the wall. He's probably furious. He's probably like, Oh, what? <laughs> and then that whole scene. She's like, what is she even doing? She's like, get, get getting kids, kids. And then she goes up and then she does it. Oh, ah, and then she goes down and oh, let's tour. <laughs> let's tour the torture chamber. Oh, no, he's here. And then ah. I was like, oh, my God. Right now, these children have learned one thing for sure. They can count on nobody but themselves. Yeah. Period. No parents, <laughs> nobody. This just was <laughs> super independent, super independent children. This is how you raise them to handle shit on their own. <laughs> One thing I didn't really notice, like from before, was like that he had put the the screws like in the windows, and I was like, oh, I never really caught that before. That that was like for later. <laughs> oh, me they, either. Like, try and get out and like all the windows like is screwed i didn't make that connection either that's interesting yeah i never noticed that before i was like oh something along the lines of those screws and tani i don't know if you had this you know at the end when the house repaired itself all the screws went out and all that stuff happened i was like why did it do that that was just lame and weird um but i did read something that one of the controversies was that um they had said that there was damage to the locks and the windows and things like that but uh investigators went in said oh no sorry the new owners of the house said the original locks and everything are on are still here and none of them are damaged. So they were kind of trying to say it was a lie. And I was wondering if that's why they put that in there, that the house repaired itself to kind of mold with that story of why was the house in fine condition when the new owners in real life moved in? I didn't make that connection, but I think that makes total sense. I totally <laughs> didn't until I yeah. read that in the research. <laughs> yeah. No, that's I think that's a good angle because that makes more sense for why that happened. Then it's mm -hmm. less like random feeling. And I like I like that there's a purpose to it. Yeah. 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 I don't think, though, if you were to watch the movie and not do additional research after of the true 
you know, stories around it, you wouldn't, what would you have made of that? Nothing to see yeah. here. <laughs> oh, that, was, that was weird and random, but cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just took it as like the house was lying in wait for its next victim. It was like, it was just going to reset so that it looked like a normal house until it got its claws into you, you know? Gotcha. Right. Yeah. And would like a realtor really like not disclose that like from the get go? <laughs> I don't know. And now I know you have to disclose and remember, I'm trying to think back if you have to disclose. Oh yeah. Okay. You don't have to disclose. I believe if not asked, if asked, you have to disclose. Gotcha. Cause I just thought it was so funny that he was like, okay, so what's the catch? And she just like runs off the porch. <laughs> I'm like, yes. Come on lady. <laughs> <laughs> I was also feeling like the opposite. I was like, I don't know if she has to tell them. I don't know if there, I kind of thought there wasn't, you didn't have to mention it to somebody. Yeah. If someone yeah. dies on, on the property, you have to, tell you them. have to tell, or them. if you know, there's mold or if you know something like that, I believe you have to tell them if they ask though, that's the thing you yeah. have to tell them if they ask. Okay. So always ask, just walk in and go, Hey, first question. <laughs> Hey, somebody die here. <laughs> was there just, a family murdered in this house? And also, is there mold? <laughs> hey, I have a question for both of you. Not knowing this story, okay? If there was a beautiful, giant house, chunk of land with a boat dock and everything that was for sale at a ridiculously cheap price, but you knew that people were killed there, would you get it? I don't think I could do something like this. I don't think I could do if if somebody died of natural causes or so, or like, you know, somebody was murdered in, I don't know, like less of a crazy way. I think I might be able to get on board, you know, like, but this this is like whole family. What's it called when you like family annihilation, like total family annihilation, like this guy went and shot everybody in the their beds. I think that would be a little too much for me. I don't think I could, I don't think I could do that. But I was going to say the same thing. Like if it was just like old age or like a sickness, um, that would be one thing, but a mass murder like that, uh, especially if I had kids, Yeah. even like throwing them in the mix, that's like a whole other thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I probably have to pass on it. But I, I do like right. a boat. I do like yeah, them, right? I, do so. like them. <laughs> I thought they did a good job of I can see why people were like, okay, let's just do it. Um, I wouldn't. I think the energy I mean, you I, I know that I could be tempted because of the location and what it looked like, but I'd be like, man, this isn't no got the energy in that house. And then kids, yeah, kids are very open to yeah. You know, otherworldly things. I think it would be too scary. I would be scared because I do believe in ghosts. So I would be scared immediately, but yeah. yeah even we, like the realtor sees that shadow, like right off the rip when she's just showing him the house. I'm like, oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> she's going to die. <laughs> Here we go. This is going to be a short movie. <laughs> <laughs> when we were house hunting, I, I did start to think like, what if we fucking buy a house and we get ourselves stuck in something and we have to be there for, you know, a couple years or whatever, at least. I was like, and what if crazy shit starts to happen? Because I don't know that I like fully believe that there are like ghosts and stuff. I've never personally had any like paranormal experiences. So but I'm also scared enough about it that mm. if something started to happen, it would really scare the shit out of me. So like, even just in the process of looking at houses, I was like, oh no, what if we buy this? And cause I mean, we're, we were looking at really old houses, like hundred year old houses. Cause that was like all of what was in our price range. And like, mm -hmm. that's a long time to have history in the house. You know what yeah, I mean? Like I was sure. like, oh, they're one of the houses that we, we really tried to buy actually had like a very creepy murder basement. It was scary. It was like a hollowed out just earth. Like you went down to the basement and it was just like somebody had dug it out while they were like living there, I think. And it was <laughs> really fucking creepy. And I was that put me on edge a little bit. Yeah, hollowed out house, earth. I love that. Our house is a it's brand new. It's just being built. And I'm like, well, what before then it was it was um farmland. And I'm like, what about before the farms? 
what about like before Guys. that, before that, it was just desert. It was just, it was a, <laughs> things do start out as not burial grounds or like anything okay. else. <laughs> How did you guys feel about this? The reason on that note, like the, because what I did go back and read, because I was curious about, I actually couldn't remember in the original movie. I thought that this whole plot was made up for this um remake like I don't re I didn't remember anything about it but it's the, kind of the same in the original movie and maybe the book too I don't I didn't do too much research into that but I think the original movie was about like it was that the house was built on an Indian like burial ground but they changed it for this remake and now it's about this guy I think I don't know correct me if I'm wrong Felicia if you read anything about that but this was a little bit more about like this guy did really fucked up shit to people. And now that's what's haunting. How did you feel about the explanation? I guess. Um, I didn't realize there was a difference there. You were saying from the original, that's what they were saying is that it was the burial ground or from the book. I, I don't know for sure about the book, but I know that the original movie was based on the book. So I assume it's the same. And I think there's just a minor difference where, or maybe I'm, I could be misspeaking. Felicia's like double checking my, um, yeah. Okay. So in the book, it is the house was built on a site where the local Shinnecock Indians had once abandoned the mentally ill and dying. Um, so that like they abandoned them there and, but that was rejected by the local native American leaders. So that was like a, a controversy yeah. because in the book, that's what he says. And they were like, no, that's not true. Um, and I think, isn't that in the movie too? Because in the movie, I don't, I saw it when I was a little kid, but I don't remember there being a torture chamber. No, I don't think, yeah. I think that's added for this. That's the difference is like, I think, I think. There that, was no guy like this particular guy that lived there and tortured people in the basement. I don't think. Right. Which yeah, is I think interesting. that was added. And so was um, like the sister. I think she was like added in too. Yeah, I she, did read that. She didn't even ex exist in the real yeah. story. Which sister? Jody. Jody. Oh, okay. Well, he, Ronald DeFeo, he did have two brothers, two sisters, and his parents. And that's who he killed. Her name, mm. their names weren't Jody, though. I think they changed the names, though, for all of this anyway. Yeah. But I read something about that too, Jess, that Jody wasn't a part of it. So yeah, I don't know. I guess my confusion was I, um, in the original, I didn't realize that it was like a burial ground. If that's what it was at all in that one, I thought it was the same like plot line basically as the remake. Okay. So for his family, um, the, the real family. Yeah. The, um, Don and Allison were 18 and 13. And then Mark and John, 12 and nine. So he didn't have like a little sister, but he had two older sisters. And he was like, oh. what, like 25 or something? 23. Yeah. 23. Yeah. Hmm. It's crazy. But guess... all of that was pretty legit. I even saw crime scene photos. Ooh. So like that all seemed very real, how they portrayed it in the beginning. I put that, wow, the beginning was intense. Like I was scared for these, you know, this family and that little girl that was hiding. That's pretty yeah. much what happened. He went in and, and, and he didn't, all of them were shot in their beds. She wasn't in the closet, but. What? That was kind of heartbreaking. Yeah. Yeah. Super scary. Do you know, Felicia, cause I didn't, I just scratched the very tiny surface on the like real life story stuff. Felicia, I think did a little bit more research into that. Um, I think I remember from some true crime podcast at some point there being something about that they had maybe even ingested something like poison or something to like, because there's no, it doesn't make sense that they wouldn't have gotten out of their bed at the first gunshot. Like oh, wouldn't yeah. you, when you get out of bed and go see what was happening or hide or something, but like everybody was shot in their bed. Yes. Yes, there's a lot of controversy around that um, that crime because there was evidence. That, okay, so the police, the detectives say they were there was evidence of sedatives, 
And so that's why everyone was in the bed. And um, Robert DeFeo changed his story several times. He says, yes, he sedated them. Then no. Then him and his older sister, Dawn, planned it all. Then it was the, a mob hit because they were connected to a mob family, I guess. His family was connected to a mob family. So he tried to blame them. So it kept changing. But then the coroner said there was they they did the toxology on everything and there was not anything in the system. So the detectives are saying there was present and then the the coroner saying, no, there wasn't. So the public was like, what the hell? Like, what is really happening? So they don't know. They don't really know. I mean, I guess you would go with the coroner, but why are people hiding things? Then is it because of the mob? No, is there a piece of that? Is that true? And so it went back and forth. Um, he had changed his story so many different times. He also he had said he heard voices, um, but he also suffered from an antisocial personality disorder. He did heroin and LSD. Um, so in every single one, he would try to, you know, say, uh, what is that called? Not a retrial, but when you come up and try to get appeal, an ap appeal, yeah, you say, "Oh no, it was this, or it was this person." I was just covering for them, or whatever, and then he died oh. in prison. But so then nobody knows really. But there was yeah. a lot of discrepancies. That one stood out to me that detail because I felt like it really threw a wrench in the. Well, what does that mean? What happened? It's so weird that they wouldn't get out of their bed, or at least be in a different position or something like even if he commanded them to like lay back down in bed i just feel like there would be evidence of that some of them wouldn't comply somebody would have gotten away something like you know they said one thing they said that everyone was face down um in one article that i read um and then i i did i saw crime scene photos and one i believe it was his sister she was on her back and it did look like she got up and then fell back on the bed. Oh. And so then he said it was because she was planning with her friends to kill her parents. And she had already killed her little brother and sister. And he got so mad that he shot her. Right. Yeah. And that they found this like gun residue on her gown. But then they concluded it would have been from like just the gun going off. Mm -hmm. um, and this guy is just lying all because then why why are the parents dead? Well, you killed your sister, and then you're like, well, shit, I might as well go care of my parents too. I mean, that doesn't really make sense. Yeah, but oh, that was one why thing. Why the hell not? <laughs> why the hell? Not? I already did it right, and he did say I couldn't stop myself. But to you, what you said, Tawny, um, that was another controversy. Is no neighbor, no one in the area heard anything but the dog barking, but. Um, the detectives say there were, was no silencer on the gun. Right. So just so it's not like a supernatural thing, but like yeah. a force field, nobody could hear it. <laughs> right. Seriously right. though, that is what it makes me think is that there's some sort of like outside. I mean, I don't know. I usually try to think of like, what is the most logical conclusion? And I think to me, the most logical conclusion is that there is some sort of sedative Right. That he planned to do this, but couldn't handle the uh, doing it to their face kind of. And so mm -hmm. had to have them asleep so that they wouldn't fight back or something. But it's interesting that they don't find that in the toxicology report. But maybe it was something that wasn't in the toxicology or it's ghosts or it's a fucking. You That's know, the only field. other conclusion. Yeah. Or it maybe be aliens. Aliens for no, sure. Aliens are nice, guys. <laughs> the government and is trying to make us think that aliens are bad so that when the aliens come down to help us, we all go run to the government for protection because they have they have brainwashed us to think they're bad when they're not. Just so you guys <laughs> know. <it>. Okay. <laughs> Put a pin in I'm that. All okay. for some aliens. They're welcome. <laughs> Come on down. Come on down. I'll pour you a glass of wine. Have a good time. It'll be fun. We're not all bad. Okay. No. Tell me all of your intergalactic secrets. <laughs> I want to hear the hot goss out in the universe. You guys will believe me if I'm kidnapped by some like men in black suits after saying this out loud with with Alexa listening over there. Right. Right. They're spying on you. Alexa's definitely an alien. <laughs> But it is weird. I think I also read that the houses are really close. They're like, mm -hmm. they're like really close, but you would hear several gunshots. Yeah. Because in the movie, in this movie, they portray it as like far away, like it's really remote. But I think the actual house was really close to they the were. houses. If you look at them, if you Google and Google map it, it's a, they're all boom, 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 boom. 
Because there's yeah. a street and all the homes right next to each other. And neighbors heard the dog barking. So they were awake and heard the dog barking and nothing else. Weird. That's weird. And then, though, okay, so then you've got, and I'm going to read you a little blurb here that I have about, like, the two of these things together. Because then you've got the Lutz family who moves in. And I'm curious to know your guys' opinion on this. So I'm just going to read, like, so that we know what is true overall. So this says, though the story is largely fictional, contrary to George Lutz's claims, the factual event elements of the story remain present in the films. Ronnie DeFeo Jr. murdered six members of his family on November 13th, 1974, and was convicted of six accounts of second-degree murder on November 21st, 1975. On December 4th, 1975, DeFeo was sentenced to six concurrent 25-to-life sentences. The Lutzes moved into the house at 112 Ocean Avenue on December 19th, 1975, which, by the way, is only, like, what, two months later? That's fucking crazy to me. I kept rereading the date because I was like, that can't be right. <laughs> That cannot be right. No, but it was two months later and moved out on January 14th, 1976. The rest, especially in this version, is all fiction, mostly based on Jay Anson's horror novel, The Amityville Horror, published on September 13th, 1977 by Prentice Hall. In reality, the Lutz's dog, Harry, did survive, unlike as depicted in this film. But what I think happened is that George Lutz talked to this person, right? who wrote the book and he wrote the book based on his experiences. And I just can't help but feel like, cause the, the people who, like you mentioned earlier, Felicia, the people who bought the house after him, like deny any of the claims that he said, like he was like, the doors were ripped open and all kinds of shit happened. And they, you know, they talk about the red room that they busted open in the basement and they were like, it was just a regular room. Like there's <laughs> no way that they didn't know about it. It was right here. Yeah. And it makes me think that the, the Lutz... house healed itself. No, <laughs> it makes me feel like the Lutz family was like, we can cash in on this. Like, how do we, you know, I don't know. I don't know the full story. Again, I didn't really do too much research into him and his story and all of that. But I was like, I don't know. I have a little. So I read this and to tell me if I'm wrong, if I grabbed this, that. They did claim what what they say is true is that they claimed they they did uh, the dad did seem to wake up at three fifteen a.m. every day, and the murders of DeFeo murders did happen or somewhere within that time. Daughter Missy begins speaking to an imaginary friend entity named Jody, or what they're saying. Kathy even claimed to have levitated above her bed, arising. From the disturbance with welts on her chest and they reached a breaking point and left the house with all and left all their possessions that they passed a lie detector test as well yeah, i read that too and then there was something about the lawyer so um uh, defeo's lawyer says that he created this story over many bottles of wine with those parents um in hopes of gaining a new trial for his client. But then um, he became a literary agent. And so when, so then when he went to, I think when DeFeo went to, uh, to trial to say, yeah, look, like this was going on. I, I should be found innocent. The judge was like, okay, this lawyer has now become a literary agent. This all seems very sketch to me. Sorry, yeah. Charlie, you're not going anywhere. And what I'm saying is like, yeah, this seems mm -hmm. like it was a planned thing for Lutz, for the Lutz family. Not not about DeFeo, but it is it is sort of like, this seems like some manufactured shit that you're going to capitalize on. It totally does based on like if the person that moved in after was like, nah, we haven't had anything <laughs> yeah. like that happen. <laughs> like, they, what the they fuck were are they like talking about? 10 years. I think they owned the house for 10 years. And they were like, nothing crazy has happened ever. Yeah, that's wild. I, yeah. I still, though, wouldn't buy that house today. Yeah, I don't think I could either. <laughs> just I just no way. It's on the market for like um, $800,000, I think, is... <laughs> I'm like, nah. <laughs> no thanks. No way. Just I can take case. my 800000 elsewhere. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, just build a brand new one. <laughs> just in yeah. case, you know, because yeah. what if there was some crazy shit that went down? They did pass lie detector tests. I don't know. Now, the boy, too, I mean, the he's a grown man now and the son, and he says he remembers it just like his parents say, but he was also little. And that's his parents telling him this is what happened, you know, in the house. So, you know. Isn't there another one of the brothers, though, that was like, this is all... I, I like that's the thing is like the the accounts are so all over the place. Like I think one of the other brothers was like or the stepson of George Lutz was like, yeah, George was like super obsessed with occult stuff. Satanic. Yeah. And he was abusive to the family. Yeah. And he was like he way over dramatized this, which I'm not saying makes him like an evil person, but I could see him being like interested in those types of stories and then saying to himself, you know what? Because there was this violent murder situation happening that happened in this house, I bet we could capitalize on this. Like, people eat this shit up, blah, blah, blah. Let's just come up with a story. We'll just leave the house, not come back for our shit, and boom, millions. Yeah. On the flip side, maybe, or the devil's advocate, but agreeing with you at the same time, is maybe because he was so into that occult stuff and the stuff, and he was, it sounded like kind of, an abusive stepdad. Well, according to that one kid, he said that maybe he did. A tr- maybe, you know, you know, like when I'm nervous to when it's dark in the room to have my feet near underneath my bed, I get a, a oh, right. little chill. Right. Uh, maybe he was like feeding into it and thinking, oh, oh shit, yeah. stuff is happening. Because like it does seem it. like everything was transmitting through him as far as the family's point of view. So maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Not on purpose, but like subconsciously. It was probably on purpose, but yeah, maybe. I'm just saying maybe. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Know. And then it's like, was DeFeo just really like insane? Because I feel like that's like that situation where he could just plead insanity to kill your whole family. And he's already got these like disorders, social disorders. And did he, Felicia? Do you know? Yeah. They said, well, first they said it was because he wanted the life insurance of his parents and then he said it was because um he ha- they were going to kill him because it was ordered by the mob then his sister was going to kill him blah, 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 right. blah, blah. then he said he heard voices so oh. it was like they were like yeah, i wonder if it's dude, like you're too late <laughs> yeah like he didn't get late. the insanity plea yeah he didn't okay. get it they're like you're no sorry <laughs> interesting it's like grasping at straws. She tries a story to see maybe this will soften it up. Nope, that wasn't the story. As soon as you get like the mob involved in that situation, it's like, eh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, now, dude. I mean, though, that's insane to kill all of those people, kids yeah. and stuff. I can't imagine. I'm Can sorry, imagine? Did, did you say the mob? Okay, get this fucking guy out of here. <laughs> <laughs> that's where I draw the line. That's where I draw the line. Those <laughs> Maybe the mob, <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> the mob just was like, we can't have this family member over here doing Satan worship and shit. This is like <laughs> killing our vibe. We need to get rid of this guy. <laughs> take up the whole family. Yeah. Not doing it. Just take yeah. up the whole family. It might run in the family, even though he was a stepdad. Was he? <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's <laughs> too many loose ends. Too many loose ends. <laughs> Oh man. Another note that I have is the music is fucking weird. I don't have any specific <laughs> examples, but I was like, this is getting weird. I think there was only a few movies where the music really was like, I was like, what the yeah. fuck was that? I didn't even notice that. It wasn't super like riveting. Like, I feel like there was like some ominous music, like in the beginning and stuff, like when they were looking at the house and then. I don't know. It just kind of fell off from that point. Yeah. There just were moments where I was like, this is a weird choice. It felt like a, it felt like a super just generic, what everybody has access to. If you buy a CD, like you can buy CD sets or whatever that have like soundtrack music. It felt like that to me. It was like, yeah. It's where they say she's outside, like clocking him in the face with the gun and stuff. Like it was kind of lifetimey. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Okay. I totally. had a like I got a lifetime vibe. <laughs> You're like, I know I've heard this before oh somewhere. 
This is a made for TV movie moment. Like (laughs) I've seen this before. (laughs) 1000% guaranteed. (laughs) That is funny. I, um, I did want to say that I, gosh, I really didn't like that priest's performance. So here's the thing. I liked the fly (laughs) situation. I did like the fly situation, but it was almost like that's the, it was glaring that that was the only reason they introduced him was for the flies. Yeah. Because he was like there. And I was waiting and, and she's like, you mean the DeFeos or something? And he goes, oh, did you know them? And she's like, I'm living in their house. And his face was like, <laughs> and I was waiting for him to have like, oh, shit. But that Me too. nothing went across his face. So then he was there and I liked it. He said, I liked how it was burning. The ho- the holy water was burning. I and actually the- wait before you oh, go. Yeah, on, yeah. I actually thought to myself in this scene, because I was also waiting for a face. And I was like, what is the right face to make in this situation? Because oh, I think, shit. I think I would be like, I think I would be like, ooh. <laughs> that's a face, though. That's a good one. I don't think that's the right choice, though, for this guy. Because it's like not, it's not serious enough, maybe. But I, I, this was a moment that stood out to me. Like, it feels like something else should have happened here. But I don't know what I would replace it with because you don't want it to be over the top. You know, like you don't want to, and you also don't want him to just give you eyebrows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that would be terrible. Because that's like comical. That's weird. I've seen actors, though, say a lot with just their eyes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You can he do a lot. a little bit more frightened, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Just a little more. Dull. He doesn't have to go. He could have. He, <laughs> I have a solution. He could have been looking away from her. And snapped the eyes to her. Yes. Not as not as dramatic as I just did. Obviously, I give you too much eyebrow. I give you too much eyebrow. It, was, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be like that. It'd be like, yes, yeah. Tawny, you know. boom. I yeah. Director it. of the freaking Academy Award winning director right now, Tawny. You got to get out there. <laughs> I solved it. That's all you would have had to say. Hey, hey, do a little like this. You know what I mean? <laughs> like Tawny did. That you just have, and you'd be like, okay, let me try it. Maybe they did, and maybe he was all. And it was really yeah. awkward. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. That's totally possible, though, really. Because, like, sometimes you think you know what you're going to get, and you don't get that. <laughs> and then you're like, okay, <laughs> let's try this a bunch of different ways. And then I'm sure maybe that was just the backup is nothing. You know? Yeah. I don't know. But anyway, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Keep going. No, that was a good conversation. Um, the So the flies, I love that scene. I remember, that's something I remember distinctly from the movie as a kid. It scarred me. I was tiny. I was pretty tiny when that thing came out and i watched it um so flies to this day remind me of the devil period flies devil and i remember just the flies on all the windows in the original movie and so i was like oh here are the flies the famous flies ah i remember and then he ran out of the house i thought it was funny with his well well, funny but i mean it is his thing flying and he jumps in the car and peels out okay he's gone and then she goes back and she's like why did you leave us and he's like Blah, blah, blah. And then that was it. And then, and then it was done. And what was the point? No, you're right. This I I looked funny at you when you were like, I didn't like this guy's acting. But now that you're reminding me of this whole scene, when she goes back to see him and he's like trying to explain it to her, I was like, OK, this is bad. This is one of those moments that felt comical. Like he was trying to deliver, the, deliver these really serious lines and they just were not landing. And it was like, OK, I don't know. Somebody needs to help this guy <laughs> again. All their money went to Ryan Reynolds. They just got what they <laughs> could get. <laughs> yes. They were like, listen, we'll pay you more for every scene you do shirtless. Right. Like, <laughs> like that's where all, they just burn their money on shirtless Ryan Reynolds. Uh, yeah, this was rough. He wasn't good. And also this whole fly thing felt like a throwaway. I was excited for the flies, too, because I remember that scene from the original movie and I thought it was so scary and then this felt really, again, sort of just thrown in. Like it was like, but why? Mm-hmm. Because it, it was in the original. It pissed me off so bad that he just like ran out. <laughs> Flies, bro? It, he yeah. definitely wasn't ready for an exorcism. That could no. have not been evil. That was just some flies stuck in the vent. <laughs> right. <laughs> I know it was a swarm, but they were just stuck in there. I mean, and- it would have been gross, but. Yeah. It's like, get yourself together. Hold yourself together, man. You're out here battling Satan and these (laughs) flies. He's not the man for the job. No. (laughs) Yeah, that was crazy to me. I'm like, he's not going to say anything at all and then just like run out and like 
it won't even roll his window down or anything. Just zooms off. Yeah. <laughs> Jess, you're so right. Because look at this. He's throwing holy water and the house is burning at the touch of his holy water. You'd be like, oh, shit. Right? And then fly, flies come out and leave. They come out. They swarm. That's gross. Don't, don't get me wrong. I would be freaked out. And then they leave and he's just booking it. Yeah. <laughs> Bugs, I'm out. <laughs> I am not an exterminator. I thought there might be like a kid with, you know, her head, you know, vomit and stuff. Yeah. Not flies. I'm sorry. No, I'm not an exterminator. <laughs> Tony. Well, this father, I did hear that the Lutz, so when they bought the house, they did have a priest bless the house before they moved in because of the murders. And then this was another controversy was that the father, father, Picararo um, stated in an affidavit that he affidavit that he only had contact with the Lutzes concerning this matter. So they did call him about it over the phone that he didn't go to the house that's portrayed. But then someone else says, no, we have it on the books that he actually did go to the house. But I mean, again, we don't know. Who knows? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who do you trust? Hmm. Not, not that priest. Not a priest scared of flies. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> He really was not prepared, though, if you think about that. He was like, I'm going to go. Well, I guess if he thought he was just going to bless the house, lots of priests do that. That's like their normal job. They go and families get them to go bless the house and they don't have to deal with massive bugs and stuff. So that's true. True. (laughs) But in the context of the movie, as an audience member, we Mm. expect him to be prepped for an exorcism. (laughs) Oh, absolutely. The fact that he just runs is you're like, okay. Really? <laughs> yeah. What a puss, man. Yeah. <laughs> Get it together. <laughs> I'm not giving him a good review. Two stars. <laughs> Two stars. <laughs> <laughs> Worst priest ever. Would not recommend. <laughs> Would not recommend. <laughs> Just like the babysitter. One star. Worst babysitter ever. <laughs> she'll scare the shit out of your kids she's gonna smoke weed in your bathroom don't do it yeah they better be leaving some bad reviews here yeah <laughs> that's funny i just had nice billy with exclamation point i think he told off ryan at one point and i was like yeah you go oh no oh i loved it when billy whacked him in the face with the pole oh yeah <laughs> on the roof i was like yes good job billy yeah. Finally. Yeah. Yeah. That was God, it. That was a scary roof. I would not want to fall off that roof. Mm. He's like, make me hold that wood again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was epic. I was so happy I'll he did that. Teach you to he torture me. Up. He protect his family since the mom was really struggling with that job. So, yeah, I did like him a lot. He was a good character. I feel like I was trying to think of what I had seen him in, too. I feel like I'm seen him in something else maybe a scary movie billy Mm -hmm. have you seen fly boys or fear of the dark the other movie Uh was as good as it gets oh maybe that's it as good as it gets the butterfly effect ah that's it oh yeah i was gonna say that and i'm like no i don't think it's the same kid but yeah butterfly effect that's a fucked up movie i know i have not seen that in so long (laughs) yeah have you seen it recently, Jess? Um, it's been a couple of years. Okay. I wonder but... if it's as good. Because I remember being blown the fuck away. Like, I remember oh. that shit blew my mind. Oh, yeah. It, like, fucked me up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> too. I was like, whoa, this is jacked. But I've never gone back and watched it again. Yeah, it's been a couple of years. I think it just, like, randomly popped up, like, on HBO or something a couple of years back. And I watched it again. And I, I think it was, I still felt the same. I was like, okay. damn. Well, I'm going to watch this again. That's exciting. <laughs> Who's in this? Uh, yeah. Ashton Kutcher. Ashton Kutcher. Ashton Kutcher, yeah. Yeah. Mm, that was a good one. Yeah. I, remember that being a good <laughs> one too. I had a big star next to, I always get like enraged when people stay after so many stupid like events happen. <laughs> I put yes. a big star next to that. <laughs> Yes, get like, out. Why? Especially like her with your children. Then they've already experienced so much trauma with their dad dying. Mm-hmm. When this guy starts 
snapping at them and yelling at them and making that boy move the wood all night while they all sit there and eat dinner. Fuck this. Like, because at this point you don't know that, oh, the house, it's the house. You probably wouldn't even assume it's the house really. Right. And you just assume like, okay, we're married now. And now the real him is coming out. You wouldn't want to believe it. So I, I get why she tries to work it out, but there's a point where you need to stand up for your babies and get the hell out of there. And he's clearly bullying that older boy. Yeah. Oh, for and sure. little boy too, actually. Little boy. I also had a star next to not the dog, damn it. <laughs> yeah, always. And they always the have dog. to do that, man. Always. I <laughs> like how they did it though. Like I because, did too. because I knew they were going to do it because then they somebody mentioned it in the movie that they first killed Ronnie the dog. Yeah. Did, yeah. And in the real story, they don't kill the dog. The dog's still alive. Um, but how you because you're like he's gonna go kill the dog but it's like that thing and yeah. so he's like ah and he frantically chops the thing oh yeah i did i did like how they they did that and they kept making the faces look distorted so he's like i don't can't tell the difference if this is like good or bad like i liked how they did that yeah, yeah i liked that too where it was kind of twisting his mind to think that because i i read somewhere that i think one of the stories that did, no, no, no. It was in the movie that the, he thought that they were possessed by demons or something. DeFeo thought that they were possessed by demons. That's why he killed them all. Yeah. I just wish there had been like maybe a little bit more. Like if that's the angle that we were going to take, if we were going to mm-hmm. take the he thought they were possessed. I wish it had been a little bit deeper than just the face changing, because, again, the face changing blends into every movie that did that in the last 15 years. Like it's just yeah. it just feels like a gimmick. It's like. Oh, look, ah, ah, scary demon face, you know, (laughs) but I wish that they had like acted different or, you know what I mean? Like that it was like a hallucination and they were not themselves and they were doing weird things like that would be, I think, a lot more impactful rather than this just like, oh, I'm seeing things, you know, Mm -hmm. that. Yeah, where it almost makes you feel like you're losing your mind, too. Like you don't know what's real. As a watch, as a viewer, you don't even know what's real anymore, and it tricks your own mind. That would yeah. be cool. I like that. I like that. Um, if that's truly the way that the movie wanted to go, it's like, let's lean into that, you know. Um, when they're outside the house towards the end of the shotgun scene, um, and he kind of has like that fever dream of axing her oh, like in the yeah. stomach. Um, I had totally forgot about that. So it threw me through a loop. I was like, holy shit. I don't remember her like getting injured or like dying. I was like, what did I miss? And then I was like, oh, I forgot that that was just like a fever dream type moment. (laughs) I had the same thought. I was like, holy shit. I was like, I wasn't expecting this. And then it was like, oh, okay. It's just uh, just a dream. (laughs) I did the exact same. I was like, holy shit. And I'm like, well, you should have fucking shot him. That was my response. (laughs) And then he was like, oh, she's fine. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> it did run through my mind i'm like eh, she deserves it you know like at this point you had your shot you did not you did. take it <laughs> sorry the kids better know how to drive that boat because they're really <laughs> truly on their own at this yes. point <laughs> they literally would have just had to run down the street oh yeah 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 it's a little bit away a little bit away i did think when she drove the boat and she looked back at the house. He's like, don't look at the house. Don't even look at it or whatever. I wrote notes here. You did not drive far away from that house. She drove like a mile out. And I then was like, just... let's stop and admire it for a second. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you, lady? Let's like, see if this is going. far enough. Okay, yeah. <laughs> now have to rescue all of your children that are in the water because he threw them overboard. One of them can't swim. <laughs> just fucking go. <laughs> don't stop just keep drive. going <laughs> drive that boat till it's out of gas like get the fuck out of there yeah you can yeah. see the homes and shit on, right on the other side of the lake just go over there <laughs> yeah that was nuts i really feel like strongly and inspired by us that we would make some right decisions yeah <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> It's just we the, say that. I know, yeah, right? <laughs> We're so confident in ourselves right now, but somebody's gonna be talking about our fucking scary movie one day. Like these idiots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Idiots. I don't think it would be so easy to shoot someone in the head that I love, like my husband, right? 
Um, yeah. That would, I don't think it'd be so easy. I'm saying it wouldn't be easy, even all that stuff he's done. I would have left though with the kids. Cause yeah. at, at this point, I would have been like, he, something is wrong with him. He's becoming an abusive asshole. Um, I'm taking the kids and I'm going to go someplace and then hopefully he could get some help. Yeah, like at the very least, what you were saying earlier about her calling him and giving him a heads up, I'd be sneaking back into that fucking house and rounding up those kids. Mm -hmm. I'd be now he is the enemy uh, until he can get the fuck away from this house and get away from its get out from underneath its, you know, power or whatever. I'm not going to call and give him a heads up. I'm going to sneak into that. I'm going to fucking park two houses down. I'm going to sneak into the back room. (laughs) <laughs> or the back door. I'm going to go like get the kids, throw them in the car. We're going to get the fuck out of there. And then I'm going to figure out a plan B on how to get him out of the house. I'm not going to risk it. You would literally just say, meet me at, meet me at the bottom of the hill. Yeah. I want to talk yeah. to you. Bring mm-hmm. your ax. It's cool. Just like meet me down, <laughs> I, down, down the, the street. Wood. Yeah. You bring the ax. <laughs> just meet me down the street. He's I'll going even down the street, drag, yeah, dragging his <laughs> axe. And then he's like, whoa, what the fuck, man? Why am I, what am I doing? <laughs> Come to his senses. Uh, where am I? You stay oh, here. Fuck, I'm going to go get the kids. Yeah. <laughs> Tactical error. <laughs> okay. Do you guys feel ready to rate it? I'm ready. Yeah, Jess, do you want to go first? Sure. So <laughs> I said I was like, I'm not going to do a whole number. I'm not going to do it. Um, I gave it a 2.9. I was going to say three. <laughs> but I'm like, actually, after going over everything and some of the really like ridiculous parts in this movie, <laughs> I dropped it a little. <laughs> I'm, I do feel bad that maybe that we talked you down a little bit. Mm, but it was stuff that I had already kind of like been thinking about I was just like after hearing you guys say it I'm like yeah that wasn't so great (laughs) yeah I respect I do think this is one of those movies that when you if you had watched it right when it came out that's a totally different experience because I do remember liking it and I remember being shocked especially by the um they're having sex and the girl is on the foot of the bed Mm. scene that's that's what stuck out to me that's the only thing I remember from watching it the first time and I even now rewatching, I thought, I think that's true for a lot of people. Like when I talk to people just about movies in general, if this movie comes up, that is the scene that comes up. And I think it was well done because there's this moment of incredible vulnerability that is so like juxtaposed with this like incredibly violent scene kind of like it's like Mm -hmm. really jarring. And so I don't know. I think there's something to that. And there was something to watching it right as it came out. But Agreed. I also didn't love it watching it the second time. So I'm going to give it a 2.75. Well, Jess, I liked the movie and I'm giving it a 3.25. <gasps> wow. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I just railed on that woman and on so many things. But oh, <laughs> I really loved Ryan Reynolds' performance. I, yeah. I, and I enjoyed the visuals of the creepiness. I thought the little girl was a really good actress. So Things that happened, like her, you know, ready to jump off that roof just affected me so emotionally or his response to the kids and like all of these things that I did enjoy it and I'd watch it again. Um, And I I think it could have been done better. And I was looking, um, I liked Dreamcatcher, so judge me guys if you want, but I gave that one a a three and I did like this more than that. Um, And so, yeah, 3.25 for me. Interesting. Nice. I actually really like Dreamcatcher too. That was actually, we yes. did that on Horror Movie Crew podcast and that was my pick. Oh, interesting. I can't, <laughs> I can't remember if we were doing a theme for that or if that was just random. I think we were doing like Aliens that month or oh. something. But yeah, I love the Dreamcatcher. <laughs> nice. I love it. It was so scored so badly. Like, you know, in Rotten Tomatoes and everything. And then mm-hmm. Tawny and Trevor did did not like it. And um, we had a really great discussion about it, but I, I liked it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love it. I Do love you remember what you gave it? Um, I think I gave it a four. <laughs> a solid okay. four. Out of five? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Damn. Yeah, that's, not, that's good. I gave it yeah. a three. 
It is a it crazy could, fucking movie. It could movie. be a little off. I'd have to go back and look at our list and it's growing. Right. <laughs> We're yeah. like on two pages now. <laughs> <laughs> and that changes things too, having the context, I feel like, of oh, other yeah. movies. Yeah, we're constantly like, oh shit, did we rate this or that too high or low or whatever? Yeah, because in the beginning you have this, you know, just the horror movies you've seen, right? And then opening opening up to so many different types, genres of horror movies, visually different visual types of movies. And then you're really like, okay, you experience something like for me, hereditary, where I'm like, oh, this is a solid five. I never waver on that. And so then everything else, I'm like, okay, really, how do I feel? It takes me a long time to figure it out. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. There's several movies that I've picked um, just random, like we'll have a theme and I'm like, all right, what are all the movies that have to deal with like storms? per se, like horror movies with storms and I'll pick one that I haven't seen. And sometimes we're all like, damn, that was really good. Like that was an awesome find. And then sometimes we're like, wow, that was absolutely terrible. <laughs> like yeah. the ginger dead man. Like, yeah. I don't know if you've seen that, but holy so, shit, like I don't recommend it. <laughs> I know. I I've heard you guys reference it so much. <laughs> Gotta be like, so I'm like, there, I have no uh, desire to watch that at all. Doesn't seem like my shit. Oh yeah. It's awful. Awful. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Then killer condom, right? Killer condom. I would watch killer condom like 10 times before I would watch ginger dead man again. (laughs) Oh wow. That bad. It's bad. (laughs) This almost makes me curious. Just like when, uh, Ian, right, from Do I Like This Podcast was talking about that cat movie, the killer cat movie. Yes. Oh, yeah. The way he was talking about it, I just was like, oh, my God, I kind of want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> just to experience just to see. it. Yeah. <laughs> well, this has been awesome. Thank you so much, Jess, for being here and being a guest on our podcast. Do you want to share again where people can find you? Yes. Um, the horror movie crew podcast, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, um, and any major podcast platform. And again, we, um, also have a Patreon. If you're interested in getting that bonus content and perks, definitely check us out. Definitely bonus content and perks. So worth it. Oh yes. Yes. Um, thank you for having us watch totally ripped shirtless Ryan Reynolds. That was the saving grace of this movie. <laughs> I'm going to sleep good tonight. <laughs> Thinking about those bath scenes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, so next week's movie, we are <laughs> um, unofficially finishing up our French, our new wave French extremity horror. I think is what it's new French extremity horror. Two week run with another two weeks in December because we're going to take the back half of the month off just due to holidays and travel and stuff. So we are going to be watching the movie Inside. This is going to be we haven't really actually titled it or anything but it's going to be like fucked up a fucked up Christmas or something. (laughs) We got some fucked up movies for you in store. Back in oh yeah because back uh, a couple months back or maybe only a month back we start with like let's make it all French extremity ah!" We have two weeks because then we already had like I think we had something scheduled with Josh. I think we had something like else scheduled. And we're like, okay, let's pick it up now. But it's just two weeks because then we have two weeks. Right. Off. Well, I, think, <laughs> I am so pumped for it. I don't know how disturbing this makes me, but I just love it. I love we're, this. I had no idea this existed. This raw and um, high tension, and mm-hmm. I'm very excited for Inside and for Martyrs. Yep, Martyrs is going to be the next one that we're going to watch mm-hmm. with the podcast on Elm Street. So that's going to be fun. That's never, exciting. Never seen it, either of us. So all I know is it's fucked up. That's what I do. <laughs> then that's going to make for a great conversation. <laughs> yeah. Really excited. So yeah, um, definitely watch the movie, watch along and check us out next week if you want to um, listen to that episode. And... Take it away, Felicia. I'm floundering. Floundering. No, I, like, I don't I know. Go? Do I go? I usually don't do this part. I'm totally fucking lost. You can tell. I'm like, I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay. And <laughs> if you want to check us out, you can um, follow us. Well, you can go to our website, twochicksandahorrorflick.com. And from there, that will lead you anywhere you want to go to our horror community on Discord, our pa- oh, I'm sorry, 
because that's your piece. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> to our horror community on Discord, Discord, to our Instagram, to our Facebook, all of the places, all the places, www.twochicksinahorrorflick.com. And what else, Tani? If you want to support the show, you can find us on Patreon as well. And we also, it really helps us if you rate and review and subscribe on whatever podcatcher that you're listening to us on. So definitely do that. And that is it again for this week. Thank you so much, Jess, for being here. Thank Super you. fun. We love you. Yes. I love you too. Thank you so much for having me on. I had a great time. <laughs> Thanks for being here. <laughs> um, you're our favorite. Don't tell the others. Okay. <laughs> Have a good night. No nightmares. <laughs>